Hi students, this is Dr. Sandriya here. I'm going to explain your 17 CV 61 Construction Management and Entrepreneurship's Module Number 3. The topic for today's discussion is Construction Site Safety. Now let us move on to the video. The topic for this video is Accidents and Safety in Construction Sites. There will be five topics which I'll be discussing in this video. First one is Construction Safety Problems. Second one is Safety, Accident and Injuries. Third one is causes of accidents, four types of construction accidents, and five say health and safety measures in construction. Before getting into the videos, let us see some pictures. The current picture shows how dangerous scaffolding accidents can be. These pictures show trench accidents. From the pictures, you would have understood that construction site is full of safety issues. So now let us see construction safety problems. Construction site hazards result in injury and sometimes even death. These problems can range from negligence to construction equipment accidents also. We need to know why and what kind of jobs are accident prone. Pressure in the worker's head tends to increase the accident rate. Just imagine the head office people are again and again asking the site engineer to complete the job in a faster rate. The site engineer will pressurize the workers to do work at a faster speed. So such a pressure may lead to accidents. Competition among workers also tends to increase the accident rate. Workers who fears of their job security tend to have more accidents. Jobs that involve speed are also more accident prone. Workers who are not thought about safety rules and regulations regarding the job are also accident prone. Long working hours, lack of rest can also cause serious accidents. Unsafe working tools and equipments also can cause accidents. Unsupervised jobs can also result in accidents. Sometimes when adequate construction safety apparel is neglected, accidents may happen. Smoking in the areas in which there are dangerous gases present leads to big accidents. Now you know what kind of construction safety problems are there in sight. Hence, it is the right time to know what is safety, accident and injury. So what is safety? Safety is the state of being safe, free from danger, free from risk or injury. Safety is also the absence of danger. So now what's accident and injury? Accident is an undesired event which results in physical injury, damage to property and also delay in work. Injury is the consequence of accident for human beings and animals. The third topic in this video is causes of accidents. So there are two causes. One is unsafe acts and the other one is unsafe conditions. So in the first picture you can see, instead of using a stool or a ladder, this person is standing over paint boxes. He may fall and he may get spinal cord or head injury. So such types of acts, which happens because of their own negligence, is called as unsafe acts. The second picture shows unsafe working conditions. So here, the car was not given a proper place to park and hence when something fell from the top floor, the car got damaged. So this shows an example of unsafe working condition. As you now know what are the two causes of accidents, let us start with unsafe acts and the types of unsafe acts. So the human action that departs from a standard job procedure or safe practice, safety regulation or instructions is termed as unsafe act. Primary causes of unsafe acts are human errors. Secondary causes are the failures of the management. A best example would be the case of the Titanic accident, where they didn't have a system to anticipate. Then lack of training, maintenance, adequate job planning and instruction will also be termed as unsafe acts. There are 12 types of unsafe acts. Operating equipment without authority, disregard of instructions, removing safety devices and then working, using defective equipment, using improper personal protective equipments or using personal protective equipments improperly, failure to understand instructions, working in an unsafe posture, absent-mindedness or nervousness, willful intent to injure others, working while under the influence of alcohols and drugs, improper lifting and carrying, lack of knowledge or skills. Unsafe working conditions. 
the physical or chemical property of a material, machine or the environment which could result in injury to a person, damage or destruction to property or other form of losses is termed as unsafe working conditions. There are 11 types of unsafe working conditions. Wet slippery floors, unstable stacking of materials, protruding rebars, live conductors without insulation, equipment without machine guarding, poor storage of combustible materials, Missing platform guardrails, fire hazards, not enough light, excessive noise, and hazardous atmospheric conditions. The fourth topic in this video is types of construction accidents. Number one, crane or hoist accidents. Cranes and hoists are important construction tools. However, lack of training, operator errors, and other factors can lead to serious accidents on construction sites. Number two, falls from heights. Scaffolding accidents ladder accidents, roofing accidents, and other falls from heights can result in tragic construction accidents. Slips and falls. A slip and fall on the ground can cause broken bones, sprains, and other injuries. Repetitive stress injuries. The repetitive nature of some construction work can result in repetitive stress injuries in the back, wrists, ankles, and joints. One good example will be a person working with a hammer. Number five, gas leaks, fires, and explosions. These can be sudden and deadly. For an example, carbon monoxide can be dangerous in a confined construction space. Number six, forklift accidents. Without proper training and attentive operators, forklifts can be dangerous and results in serious construction accidents. Number seven is trench accidents. A trench collapse or an accident within a trench can be devastating. A construction worker may be trapped and unable to get out of his own. Number eight, elevator shaft accidents. Construction workers may be at a risk of falling down elevator shafts if safety precautions are not in place. Number nine, electrocutions. Electrical equipment, overhead electrical wires, wiring, and lighting all create risk of electrocution for construction workers. Number 10, machinery accidents. Heavy machines are necessary to complete construction jobs but they also create real risk for construction workers when they either malfunction or when the operator is negligent. Number 11, struck by accidents. Motor vehicles are common on construction sites. A construction worker is at a risk of being struck by a motor vehicle or piece of machinery while working on a construction site. Number 12, caught between type of accidents. A limb or an entire person may get caught by a piece of equipment or crushed by the debris of construction accident. Number 13. Exposure to dangerous chemicals or toxins. Breathing in certain chemicals or toxins can cause construction workers to suffer from serious respiratory illness. The fifth topic in this video is health and safety measures in construction. It's a very important 8 mark question in the exam point of view. So, Health rules, regulation and policy, PPE, housekeeping, fire prevention and fire extinguishers, tool inspection, emergency procedures, safety bulletin board, first aid training and incident investigation and safety meeting. These are all the protocols that must be followed in any type of construction site irrespective of the job involved. The first type of safety measures which is used in construction industry is PPE or personal protective equipment. There are different types of personal protective equipment as follows. Head protection, hearing protection, respiratory protection, eye and face protection, hand protection, food protection, protective clothing, etc. For head protection, we can give the example of a helmet. For eye and face protection, we can give the example of a mask. And for hand protection, we can give the example of a gloves. And for food protection, we can give the example of boots. The second one is health and safety policy. A health and safety policy is a written statement of principles and goals embodying the company's commitment to workplace health and safety. Safety policy demonstrates top management's commitment to ensure safe working environment and methods at every single construction site. In India, the Ministry of Labor and Employment approved the National Policy on Safety, Health and Environment in Workplaces in the year 2006. A total of 16 laws are there regarding working hours, conditions at work and employment. Two acts have legal positions for legal measures for the protection of health and safety of workers. 
the Factories Act 1948 and the Mines Act 1952. These agencies have regulations to ensure the safety and health of all the workers at the place of work. Number 3. Fire Prevention or Fire Extinguishers There are two methods of dealing with fire in construction work. By preventing it from happening and controlling the consequences if it happens. Both require equal attention during the planning process. There are three ingredients for a fire. Fuel, oxygen and source of ignition. By removing any one of them, there will be no fire. Much of fire prevention takes place in the planning stage. Usage of less flammable materials, minimizing the quantity of flammables on sites, storing flammable solids, liquids and gases safely separated from each other and from oxygen cylinders or oxidizing materials, making sure rubbish is removed regularly and last but not the least, ban smoking in appropriate areas. Number four, emergency procedures. The safety plan should contain an appropriate emergency plan. Potential emergency situations like flooding or multiple injuries from any cost must be included in this emergency plan. A more common form of emergency is the need to evacuate an injured person, especially from the most inaccessible area of the project. So in general, an emergency plan is nothing but it is a plan which can shorten the duration taken between an injury occurring and the arrival at a treatment center. This should always be evaluated and reassessed as the construction work proceeds. Number five, safety bulletin board. The purpose of the safety bulletin board is to increase employees safety awareness and pass on the company's message. It is the place where the employer communicates the policies and procedures to its employees. An attractive bulletin board can help promote safety in the workplace. Number six, construction safety meeting. A safety meeting should be carried out and attended by the entire professionals, which includes the safety advisors and the inspecting engineers. A briefing on the safety policy and also the details of the safety plan must be done here. Commencement of any site work is possible only after getting approval from the inspecting engineer. Besides that, safety manager and safety officers are appointed as required by the contract. Approval of the appointment of the safety staff is also required from the inspecting engineer. Number seven, first aid training, equipment and procedures. First aid is an important and is required in every workplace. First aid provides the initial and immediate help to a person who is suffering from an injury. It also prevents the injury from becoming worse. Employers are required to provide a first aid station where it is accessible at all times in the workplace. Training generally includes the mandatory topics such as emergency scene management, severe bleeding and rescuer CPR. Number eight, safety meeting. A safety meeting is designed to reinforce safety knowledge and management's commitment to doing it the right way and making safety a way of life. Hope you understood the importance of construction site safety. Thank you for watching the video.